let's move on. Uh, next up, we have Vardis Santos talking about animal tracking data. Go ahead and share your screen, Vardis, and go into presenter mode, and you got it. Great. Can everyone uh, hear me and see my screen? Got both. You great. sound and look good. Excellent. So uh, that was a great introduction because now we're going to be talking about biological gliders. And there's some additional challenges associated with some of these animal telemetry data sets. But that also sort of reinforced some of the general issues that have been raised to this point. Uh, and a lot of this work was actually done under an, a NASA access funded uh, project called uh, OIP or Oceanographic in situ data interoperability project. And one of the products of this was a, uh, a net CDF uh, standards based specification for electronic tagging data. I'd like to acknowledge my co eyes on that project, uh, Tim Lam and Sean Arms from Unidata. Okay, uh, so as I said, yeah, we're talking about uh, deployments of uh, tags, uh, sensors basically, on biological platforms. And uh, the data that you get out of these are sort of trajectory, tra trajectory profile data. Now there's different types of uh, tags. You have spot tags that uh, sort of transmit positions to satellites. You have others with no environmental data, just the positions. Then you have implantable tags that are surgically inserted into the animal um, and record environmental measurements. And then you have uh, pop-up archival tags that uh, record measurements. Um, they're basically attached to the animal externally and then they pop off at, after some time uh, period that's programmed by the researcher and then they transmit data to the satellite. So those are the typical classes of uh, animal telemetry tags. There's also acoustic tags, uh, which basically record presence, absence type information around uh, listening stations, but uh, I'm not going to be talking about those here. So the typical information you get from these, uh, you know, minimally uh, light level, pressure, uh, depth, temperature, and, and position in some combination of these. And uh, these are exceedingly fascinating data sets. These animals undertake uh, somewhat extraordinary uh, movements and migrations over their, over their life histories. Um, and they're also invaluable data for uh, both for oceanographic research and uh, operations, but also for fisheries management, critical information on stock st spatial structure. And as a consequence, there's been a, a large number of deployments of tagging data by many different agencies and individual researchers over time. And this has sort of uh, culminated in the development of these uh, national data assembly centers uh, here in the US, uh, the, the IUS Animal Tele Telemetry Network in Australia, IMOS, uh, ATF, okay? And now these uh, national centers are organizing internationally and they have uh, recently submitted a, uh, a proposal that's been approved uh, to become a formal element, observing element within the global ocean observing system. But to do this, uh, for these uh, initiatives to succeed, uh, especially when you're talking about operational data systems, uh, data interoperability is a key and critical to success. Oops, I'm going in the wrong direction. There we go. And, uh, and again. Okay, so what are the challenges? Oop. Uh, the first challenge is that uh, there's extreme heterogeneity in the native file formats produced by the instrument uh, manufacturer software. And as you can see, these are highly heterogeneous, uh, typically ad hoc ASCII CSV type formats uh, with uh, very limited metadata. At best, at times, some kind of uh, column header and maybe a, a couple of rows of some esoteric information. So that's a key problem. Um, obviously, none of the stuff is standards compliant and uh, reusable. So to address these problems, as was stated before, there really needs to be a, a sustained effort to engage with the uh, tag instrument manufacturers themselves. And in fact, in the OIP project, uh, we had uh, one of the leading tag manufacturers, Wildlife Computers, as one of our collaborators. The intent being to try to educate them about some of these uh, 
data, data standards issues. Challenge number two is that uh, you, yes, you have the typical kind of time series at depth and position type information for some of the, the tag data types. But then for the pop-up archival, you know, uh, what they actually transmit to, to satellite are summarized uh, data, okay, at some pre-described uh, time interval. It could be daily, uh, six hourly, whatever the researcher programs into the, into the tag. So what are the best practices uh, within a kind of CF framework to represent these uh, summary type of data sets? which are typically in the case of these uh, PAT tags, uh, they are bin frequency type information. Uh, and there's two types. There's sort of these static bins that the, that the researcher pre-programs in advance. But there's also these PDT series, which are basically dynamic bins. So over the course of the day, uh, the fish may change its depth distribution, say, and, and essentially in these PDTs, a dynamic uh, binning scheme is applied uh, to those daily daily positions. So that's challenge number two. Challenge number three is uh, how do you represent a positional uncertainty in these data sets? And uh, which is a major issue for animal telemetry data, okay? Uh, and of course, you know, this is not unique just to animal telemetry, even Argo profiling floats have uh, positional uncertainty associated with them. How do you represent that uh, error kind of information? And that's very important. So we have two use cases here. Uh, basically, in the case of uh, these archival and pop-up tags, uh, the positions are actually indirectly measured based on light level. Okay, so these are not, the positions are not direct measurements, sort of GPS type measurements of position. They're basically estimated from light. Uh, light level that the sensor, uh, sensor uh, picks up. And of course, there's potentially large errors associated with this, but there are methods available, state space models, Kalman filters, various other techniques for do these to, to undertake geocorrections on the positional information. So once these geocorrections are made, how do you actually represent those uh, positional uncertainties, those envelopes? Uh, in the tag, with the tag data themselves, and also record the method by which that geocorrection happened, right? Because different uh, uh, analyses uh, techniques can produce quite different results. Uh, the, the other aspect is, say, for spot tags, uh, or once these uh, pop-up archival tags come to the surface and, and start transmitting positions to Argo satellites, there is <coughs> Uh, uncertainty associated with the Argo position. So a quality code that Argo provides for uh, the precision of the geolocation, or rather the accuracy of the geolocation. So how do we represent this kind of information as well? Uh, the, the, third, the fourth challenge is we're dealing with biological data and deployments of tags on biological platforms. So there's much more uh, there's additional metadata pertaining to these deployments, a richer set of metadata that uh, really need to be captured in order uh, to properly describe the deployment, the performance of the tag, and to facilitate a re, uh, robust uh, scientific interpretation of these data sets, okay, over time. And to ensure that these data are preserved in, a, in a, and archived in a fully described uh, state. So what we did in OIP was actually uh, have working sessions with uh, researchers, um, experts in the in the tagging domain, and compile these lists of of uh, metadata that they would like packaged in these data files together with the data. Uh, and there was quite a long list. Uh, we came up with these ten different categories, and we dispositioned the attributes as as to whether they should be considered uh, required, optional, or recommended. And uh, thirty of the one hundred and thirty were considered to be mandatory. And then uh, we developed a framework for actually packaging these metadata within a uh, netcdf file using this group construct that is now available. Okay. 
So um, those were some recommendations that came out. Uh, what is being done, what has been done historically in terms of uh, standards for animal telemetry data? The first foray into this and a wonderful project, if you're not aware of it, is this MIOP, uh, International Consortium for Animal Telemetry, uh, for uh, Marine Mammal Telemetry Data. And what they very intelligently did was they leveraged the, the NetCDF core Argo profile uh, format to uh, package their marine mammal data. And why was this important? Uh, because it provided a, a standards-based int uh, interoperable format that could be widely used by the oceanographic community, something that they were very familiar with. But, you know, MIOP only represents a certain type of, of uh, animal telemetry da data, and as I said, there's a greater diversity of tag types. And so that led to this formulation and development of this NC uh, ETAG specification. And as I said, um, it's... Um, uh, basically deals with both continuous data series and these discrete summary type data, supports the range of key electronic data uh, class types, uh, rich domain metadata, et cetera, et cetera. The, the key challenges that we were facing. And we've published these specifications for the community. Just concluding, uh, some key takeout points uh, from this, and I, I believe probably also some of the other presentations. So data interoperability stands are critical for the long-term preservation of data, their correct scientific usage, and assimilation into automated workflows. Uh, at times, these things are considered by the community as a hindrance, but they should instead be viewed as an enabler of efficient reproducible science. And uh, we've showed that the development of these uh, standards for animal telemetry data is a tractable problem and that they align with prevailing earth science uh, observation data standards that are used. Uh, but we needed also to extend those and involve the community in uh, developing some of those extensions, okay? Another key point, standards alone don't suffice, okay? Uh, we need software tools to facilitate implementation for broader uptake by the community. And there has to be an outreach component in order for the community to understand the value of them going to the effort of uh, producing this information and these standards compliant files. Thank you. Evartis, that was great, Ed. Really good contrast. Um, uh, with the Gladder talk before and a lot of similarities and a lot of differences between the implementation of the data and metadata. Um, we have about a uh, half a minute if somebody feels like they have a very, very urgent question for Vardis. Just ring it and go for it. Yes, so there's, I see a question from uh, Ted on how the adoption of uh, NCE tag is going. Basically, it, uh, it was helpful to the Anibos uh, Goose application because uh, they could cite this as, a, um, as, a in, as part of their sort of data standards uh, for that, that initiative. They were able to cite a concrete specification uh, that, that they could leverage. And going forward, I think they'll be using that. Great, thank you very much. Yeah, thanks. Okay. Guys. Okay.